Coming up in today's show, I'm going to be talking about plantations at Fiji rum, uh, and then we're going to be diving into Belgrove's gorgeous uh, spiced fig and blackberry, kind of flavoured rum if you like. Uh, and then mixer-wise, I'm going to be talking about uh, coconut water and kind of giving you some, and see how it goes with this essentially. So stay tuned for that. Um, so welcome. Uh, this is kind of my new look rum show. I wanted to kind of create something minimal editing. You're going to see me kind of going off my notes behind me there, but I'm going to rock this out each week because I kind of wanted to create something new and something for the rum industry, the spiced rum industry, the flavoured rum industry to kind of help everyone that come together, showcase a few products, help me with my knowledge, try and educate some of you guys as well and kind of help you on your journey. So each week, how this show is going to work, we're going to be breaking this down into kind of three segments if you like and this will be kind of a long video but it will be chaptered up so you can skip so you know you can skip to the parts you're interested in so if you're you know if you're not a real out and out rum lover you can skip to the sort of spiced and flavoured rums part of this if you want to see me chatting about mixes you can skip to that so have a look for the chapters below you can dive into there but each and every week we're going to be taking a different rum or maybe a brand a couple of different rums uh, clumped together to kind of talk about them and some tasting notes what I see what I think about them. And at the end of the day, this is not about me telling you what I think about these rums. It's kind of about helping you to understand and help you on your journey. So we're going to be covering a rum in the first part of the show. In the second part of the show, we're always be going to be covering a, a kind of spiced rum or a flavoured rum and see how that category sort of opens up over the next sort of coming months and year maybe. And then as I say, we're, I'm going to be introducing to you uh, a different mix of the week. Something to get you thinking about, Oh, because I know a lot of you guys will be Coke and ginger beer and how you drink your rum, simple serves like that. But I just kind of want to broaden your horizons and open stuff out. So I have done a lot of this stuff before but I've never done it in a video like this um so uh, let, let's just crack on with it and see how it goes. As I say, I'm not going to try and edit these. I want to do it if you could listen to this as a podcast as well and just see it. Whether it's going to last 20 minutes or 30 minutes, we don't know. So let's crack on. So first up, I want to kind of focus on uh, plantation of Fiji. Uh, I've got a little bit of uh, stuff that's um, uh, I've written down there or kind of cut and paste off the plantation website just to kind of tell you about. There's a little bit of blurb on there as well. But the reason why I wanted to focus on this is because one, it's my favourite, one of my favourite kind of rums. It's a very different rum. There is nothing else on my back bar quite like this. And Plantation Fiji, that's just, I know you've got, a, actually, I know you've got the close-up down there. I say minimal editing. I am going to kind of edit a little bit for a few close-ups just so you can see it. Uh, but for you guys that may have YouTube Premium, that you're just going to put this on and listen to it, it's a very, it's one of Plantation's most colourful bottles, should we say. Uh, it's lovely kind of blue. There's iguanas on there. There's kind of parrots, blue macaws, whatever you want to call them. It's a very colourful and it's very different uh, to anything Plantation like if, um, like they've already got. Now, the Plantation Fiji is uh, in their, I think they call it a signature blends range. Uh, so we've got the bartender range. If you are watching this on video, we've got the like the three stars, the original dark, the, the pineapple, Stiggins Fancy, and the OFTD. That's their classic sort of bartender range. The next level up, they go for their signature blend range. So we've got uh, the Plantation Fiji. We've got the Zion Maca. We've got the Barbados uh, five-year-old. We've got one of my favorites, actually, the Gran Añejo, the Guatemala and Belize. And I believe there is another one uh, that's not available in the UK uh, in this range as well. Oh, and the X so actually the XO kind of comes into this as well, signature blend. So uh, let me just kind of run you through it on the back then. I will give you the tasting notes about it in a second. So the little bit of blurb on the back of the bottle is uh, from the pristine lagoons of the lush jungles, Plantation Isle of Fiji is owed to the beauty of the Fiji Islands. This delicious rum is made using traditional techniques and local Fiji sugar, Fijian sugar cane. Uh, first aged in this tropical climate in bourbon casks, the rum is then sailed to the southwest of France for a second maturation in French oak casks. This double aging method paired with Fijian know-how creates the rum with warm notes of exotic fruits and raisin. And let me just touch on that for a second because this is one of the things I love about plantation uh, rums. They are kind of double aged. Most of them, I think if not all of them, are double aged rums in a sense. So what that means is they will be aged in the country that they are distilled and created in. So whether it's the Caribbean, whether it's Fiji, I know plantation have got an Australia rum out there now. So the, the first kind of tropical aging will go 
go on in those native countries. Now, by tropical aging, if, if you're new to kind of that, see tropical aging as uh, a, a, a basically when in hotter climates it will speed up that aging process so whereas a whiskey in the uk or in scotland for instance may have been aged for five years say or 10 years let's just do 10 years um a rum that's been tropical aged for maybe like say three years will take on the characteristics of maybe a 12 or even a 15 year old uh, whiskey in that sense because it speeds up the process so they're not comparable in that sense for you know a five-year-old rum would be the equivalent of a 15 or 20 year old whiskey to take them because you know and we're talking when we talk about aging we're talking about those characteristics coming out from the barrels that it's been aged in so that's the first part that's tropical aging the second part of this because plantation is essentially or Maison Ferrand uh, the brand the, the guys the the um, the actual owners of this, Maison France, they are actually a cognac house. So they've got cognac barrels and they are obviously based in France. So the cool thing and why I love, because I love cognac anyway, but the whole reason why I love some of the plantation rums is because they are then shipped back to France to get um, some aging from cognac barrels in our kind of humidity uh, and kind of weather system. So they're very different rums in that sense. Now, let's take you back to the plantation Fiji rum. And I've got the, um, where are we? I've got so a little bit, a little bit of knowledge just about this. It's a blend of pot and column still rums. Uh, it's a mix. It's, so it's then blended for two or three. The different rums are blended for two and three years tropical aged. As I say, that might give you uh, the characteristics of a ten year old, for instance, a ten year old whiskey if it was kind of aged in the UK like that. So we've got two or three years tropical aging, and then it's got one year back in France. Okay. So bearing in mind, tropical aging in this will be Fiji. Uh, we don't need to know about the, the caramel. There is a touch of, uh, for the, we're not going to get all geeky and pretentious like this. Just to let you know that in some batches, there may be a tiny, tiny amount of caramel colouring uh, to kind of keep the cons brand consistent. And that just purely because different barrels uh, will give off different colours. That's okay. And they just want to take it consistent. In the grand scheme of things, we are talking between naught and 0.1% percent of caramel might have been added and I've got the sugar uh, down here somewhere as well where have I got I think I saw 16 uh, percent somewhere I forget where I put it but uh, sorry 16 16 mil I forget where it's gone now I forget what I've done where is it I'm sure it's on here somewhere dosage is I'm sure I saw it there we go 16 grams it's on the front of the bottle so 16 grams of sugar per litre okay now just to clarify that and I say I don't want to get too geeky but just to clarify that 16 grams per litre the maximum permitted in the EU, EU is 20 grams per litre for rum so it is quite a sweetened rum in that sense you will see some of the um, some rums actually uh, some of the four square rums will be nothing no sugar added it will just be coming straight out the barrels or anything like that but a lot of the Central American rums for instance they will be up in the 15 16 maybe 20 uh, grams of sugar there to give you a broad spectrum and outline of this uh, we then go up to spiced rums which could be anything from 50 60 some spiced rums will be less like proper spiced rums like Chairman's Reserve wherever it's gone for instance will be way less than that but some of the brands in the UK, we are talking 50, 60, maybe even 100 grams of sugar per litre. And then to compare that to a liqueur, so like a fruity liqueur like bowls, we are talking in excess of 20 grams of sugar per litre. All right, so when we're talking 16 grams per litre, it's nothing compared to, and nothing compared to spiced rums either. So let me just kind of get that through. Right. Let's uh, let's hit you up with the tasting notes, uh, what we've got there. So this is coming directly off a plantation's uh, website. Uh, so we've got the color is obviously gold, and it is a very kind of luscious gold there. Uh, nose, it's got intense. It starts on molasses with pear and varnish. Interesting. Uh, and then it becomes fruitier, um, spicier apple, banana and gooseberry. Also nutmeg and vanilla with a hint of smoke. So I'm gonna grab a glass while I'm reading this out. And then palette wise, uh, we are talking rich and round. Uh, it follows the nose with vanilla fudge, honey, ginger, and fruity notes of prune and coconut. We like that. Finish is very long with dried banana, bourbon, and allspice. And then uh, it's got empty glass of molasses, oak, and allspice. And I have to say, and I think the legends in my community, I know a few of you have got this, um, this rum, will absolutely great, agree with me. This is a really a delicious sipping rum. And that's how they kind of suggest you drink it. But I have got a few serving suggestions coming up for you in a second. But just to 
just to try and eat. It's such an easy drinking rum. It really does go down. I get everything that they're talking about. Where are we? So on the nose, it says becomes fruitier, spicy apple and banana and gooseberry. I definitely, I, I perhaps wouldn't be able to get the banana. I, sorry, I get the banana. I wouldn't be able to get the gooseberry off that. But it's a gorgeous, gorgeous rum. Quite happily to uh, sip that neat. Really, really happily sip that neat. Uh, it doesn't even need an ice cube in it for me for the dilution. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Now, the one thing I want to do with this is kind of like serves. I know this is how you, a lot of you will drink this neat, but I know a lot of you watching this will be interested to see how it mixes. And I've got, so I'm going to do, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, a daiquiri. Waste not whatnot, I might as well just use that. I'll do a miniature daiquiri. So I always do my daiquiris kind of a two, one, half. Uh, oh, that was bang on there. Okay, so I've got 15 mil there. So two, one, half, uh, two parts rum, one part um, lime juice, and then half a part sort of, um, oops, it's a bit of spillage. See, that's what we're going for. We're going for unedited and that's, so a little bit, a bit of lime. I've got some sugar there, just to kind of see what it's like on a daiquiri. So I'm just doing that. So two, one, half. You're gonna make that properly. 60 mil, 60 mil of uh, rum, uh, 30 mil of lime juice, for instance, and then uh, 15 mil of um, uh, sugar syrup. So, quick shake, daiqu daiquiri challenge. Right, that's just that. We shall use the same glass again. So, daiquiri. This is possibly my favorite way of drinking drinking this. So we've got that. Oh, got my mixers there. Right, daiquiri. And that is just gorgeous. It really is. For me, it even enhances those kind of fruitier notes to it. I, can't, I really struggled to describe it because it is like no other rum that I've had. But it's just gorgeous. I could happily drink that as a daiquiri all day. I think to go back to the um, to the palette on the the tasting notes on the palette here, rich and round the nose with vanilla fudge, honey, ginger, and fruity notes of prune and coconut, and it's just I don't know the really the the, the daiquiri really kind of brings out the um, the sort of and um, the sort of coconutty vibes going on there, and possibly even the banana notes on there. I really really love it. Now I'm going to do. I have all these rums I'm going to do. I'm going to do like the Coke test. I'm going to do uh, the ginger test. Um, and I'm also going to do a couple of other things as well for this. So uh, for this one, now, interestingly, uh, Nick, the guy from ID Brands that kind of imports this in the plantation rums in the UK, he said to me, you really want to try this with tonic water. And do you know what? I've never actually got around to doing it. So I've got... Um, Actually, let's just split that between two. I've got, because I'm not a huge plain tonic water fan, but I have got a little bit of tonic water here. That'll do. Uh, so I've got normal tonic and I've got Mediterranean tonic. And I just kind of want to see, I'm more of a Mediterranean tonic fan if I'm going to do anything. So there we go. So plain tonic and Mediterranean tonic. Oh, actually, that's not bad. Plain tonic's not too bad. Oh wow, Mediterranean tonic. Mediterranean tonic with that is absolutely gorgeous. I really, really love that. And that is a banging shout as well. That's gonna be a lot better with some ice as well. I mean, they have come out of the fridge, but that is a glorious serve. Oh, I could quite happily drink that. That's a, that's a new one for me. I'm not huge, I wouldn't naturally think of rum and tonic water. Um, but yeah, that's that's really interesting. So the next ones we're going to do, I've got some coke and the two gingers here. So not to uh, not to waste too much. We don't want, we don't want to get absolutely legless doing this. So I've got a bit of rum in there. The first one, um, we always you know people rum and cokes, of course they do. So I've just got Coke Zero here. Uh, caveat. So you know if you full fat Coke or whatever you use, that's absolutely fine. So Coke. It's really tasty. You know, it's it's got that fruitier side to it. it it's going to create a really, really different Cooper Libre in a sense. You know, rum and coke, maybe some lime in there. That it's it's really, really drinkable. 
I really do like that. Surprised me actually. Because it's not it's not a rum that I would associate putting Coke with. But I know a lot of you are actually going to drink uh, rum and Coke. So that's a really good shout. Um, and I've got, oh, where's my other one? Hang on. I've got some, see, I told you this was going to be me going off camera as well. I've got my fridge there next, luckily. Um, I've got some ginger ale here. I'm really struggling to get like little ginger ales at the moment. So I've got some ginger ale. Some just um, what you guys would know over the pond as... Um, Canada Dry, but it's Schweppes ginger ale in the UK. I have got my Fever Tree Mediterra um, Mediterranean Spiced Orange Ginger Ale. So that's a good shout. So we go normal ginger ale first. Oh, see, that is gorgeous. I could quite happily drink that all day. Really, really nice. And then the Spiced Orange Ginger Ale. Oh, that's even better. That is a really good all-round rum. The only thing I will say for it, it might get, you know, when we're going up in the big kind of tiki cocktails, it might get lost a little bit um, because I wouldn't say it's a massively punchy rum. But for delicate flavours, you know, when I'm talking, you know, when we're doing tiki cocktails, we do kind of use a lot of like the funkiest stuff like Appleton's and um, those big sort of bold notes. That's kind of, for me, it's more subtle in that way. But simple mixes, I don't know how, I was really surprised by the Mediterranean tonic. But I think for me, um, the kind of spiced orange ginger ale just sort of pips it. But I do love that ginger as well. They are cracking, crack. All of those work a treat. Uh, so we've done that, we've done that, we've done that test. That's awesome. So yeah, Plantation Fiji, uh, if you've got any questions, uh, let me know in the, in the comments below. Uh, and if I don't know the answer, I'll find out for you. Uh, that's how this, you know, I, I, I won't, I'll confess, I'm not the all singing, all dancing knowledge on this. I, a lot of my knowledge comes from chatting to the guys and websites pulling off different things there. So that's that. Uh, I have got some ginger beer here as well. Uh, we might, boy, have I got a spare glass? I haven't got a spare, I've got a spare glass. Let's just do because I'm going to rock the ginger beer out in the second bit of the second slip in the uh, in the second run. So let's just do a tiny little bit of Fiji with ginger beer. And this is my ginger beer. It's um, uh, Gunner Ginger Rebel because it's it's less gassy, it's less fizzy. So we have got that. So rum and ginger beer. Oh, I'm not a huge fan of that actually. Uh, the ginger ales, really, really good. But the ginger beers, um, yeah, no, I'm not a huge fan. Honestly, that has really surprised me with the Coke. It's really surprised me with the tonic water. Um, yeah, so that's cracking. Now let's move on to this. This is Belgrove's uh, Spiced Fig and Blackberry kind of flavoured rum, spiced rum, however you want to call it. I think we would naturally classify this as a flavoured rum. Uh, now, I for those of you that watch my live show, you will quite know, you will know that I kind of open up most weeks with um, this as a daiquiri. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous rum. Absolutely love this. Uh, no bias this involved in here at all. I just absolutely love it. And I do, to be fair, I do love Ed uh, who owns the brand, who is uh, Mr. Belgrove himself. I mean, let's be honest. He's he's just a nice guy. He's a smiley kind of a bubbly guy. He's just an, and he's brilliant at what he does. Let's face it, right? If you're going to launch a new brand in the UK. Okay. Um, and especially when you're kind of looking at flavoured rums or stuff like that, you kind of most people are going down the spiced rum uh, kind of route and you kind of go that way. No, 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 not it. It comes straight to market with his first one, which is kind of like a Nutella rum. Hopefully you'll get that. I'll kind of do a little bit of editing so you can see that in the close-up. He's got his hazelnut rum, which is absolutely gorgeous. Really, really good. It's an espresso martini, really good with Coke and things like that. It's just a really, really good rum. So for your first sort of entry point to the whole rum world uh, for a Nutella rum, hazelnut rum. I mean, let's give the boy a round of applause. But he followed that up this year with a, so 20, where are we, 2021. He followed that up this year with his spiced uh, fig and blackberry. And it is gorgeous. So the rum itself, uh, I know a little bit about it, is actually Guyanese rum. So kind of Demerara based rum. Guyanese rum, think kind of El Dorado, essentially. Uh, DDL Demerara Distillers Limited. 
Uh, so that's got its base. Uh, I've got a little bit of blurb there, and I'm not going to give you the whole history behind Ed, but it was kind of, uh, from what I know about him, he's kind of he's he's kind of flavoured. It was all his business is all centred around family and kind of traditions and what they would do. And you know, his favourite bar to, for the for the um, the hazelnut there, his favourite bars were like uh, Snickers and things like that. I think I think that's right. Uh, and so that's where that came from. Now the whole spiced fig and blackberry. Uh, so just to give you a little bit on the back of the bottle, and it's something I've picked up that I've not actually thought about before. Belgrove is distilled from pure Demerara sugar cane grown on mineral-rich banks of the Demerara River in Guyana. And natural flavours of fig, blackberry, and a touch of cinnamon give our rum a unique taste. Perfect in co cocktails or simply with ice. Now, here's something to pick up on. And this is something I knew and I just forget quickly forgot about it. Ed doesn't use any artificial color, any artificial flavors in here, in these rums at all. They're all natural flavors. So whereas a lot of brands, you know, are just adding sort of natural kind of flavor compounds and things like that. Uh, Ed's not, Ed is using purely, um, sorry, I don't, I, Go back. I think I said no, natural. A lot of brands are using artificial flavors and going into their rum. So artificial flavor compounds going into flavor rums up, especially some of the big boys. I'm not going to name drop, uh, but you can imagine who they are. Ed, on the other hand, is just using uh, natural flavors. So everything in here is completely and utterly natural, and I've got a big, big fan of that. Uh, it's to just make me make sure I've not missed anything on there no i've got a cocktail recipe to give you there but right just carry on so the one way i've not actually got as far as this the one way that they've it recommends you serve it is in the cuba libra with coke uh so the fig bear in mind spiced fig and blackberry rum in coke i don't think i've ever tried it but i'm flipping well going to so uh i've got my coke that i've opened from the first one there i was like i always have this as a daiquiri but spiced fig and blackberry it's a Cooper Libra. Uh, I'm going to try it. I'll try it without the lime first. Wow, the smell. Oh, the smell. The smell is gorgeous. I don't really need to give you too many tasting notes, you know, unlike the, the plantation of Fiji. There is no point in me giving you any tasting notes at all in this because what you smell and what you taste are fig and blackberry and a subtle hint of cinnamon. That is what that is what you kind of get from there. It is just gorgeous, and I don't mean subtle. They are proper in your face. They are really, really good rums. So I really, I prefer it as a daiquiri. I'll be honest, but that's really good. It's, it dials down. It reminds me of um, what's what you get at Christmas, like plum pudding. It kind of reminds me of plum pudding. I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of lime in there, just like a wedge of lime. Cooper Libra, proper Cooper Libra. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, uh, the limes just kind of ruined that for me. I'll be honest. It was nice just with Coke. I don't know whether he says had lime. No, <laughs> he doesn't say had lime. Oh well, there we go. Um, it just says add a few frozen berries. Uh, yeah, granted. I think that the lime has just completely killed it for me with the Coke in there. That's really interesting because as a daiquiri, I think it's phenomenal. There is no point in me covering the daiquiri here because I open it every single most live shows that I do. That is the daiquiri I'm drinking. So there's no point in me doing a daiquiri in this show. But yeah, the lime's kind of killed it. But it's a rum and Coke. That was actually really good. Really interesting. Right. Let's uh, let's kind of go down the, the other route. So I've got, let's do the two ginger ales first. So we've got a little bit of there. So I'm going for, um, let's put the Coke to one side. We're going for a bit of Canada Night, Canada, Canada Night, Canada Dry first up. Bit of Canada Dry. And we are going for some of Fever Tree's Spiced Orange. I don't, I can honestly say I've not tried uh, with either of those. So, uh, Canada Dry, or oh, whatever, it was Schweppes ginger ale. Oh, that's amazing. That's really good. Oh, now I've got high hopes for the spiced orange because that is my favourite. I love the spiced orange. I've got really high hopes for this. Oh, that is so good. That is so good. I'm going to add a little ice cube because I like my drinks really, really, really cold. And that has come out of the fridge, but obviously the rum is uh, room temperature. Oh, that is really good. Oh, that might be up there with the daiquiri. 
Oh, that's that's a close call. Right, now I want to get onto a couple of cocktails for this. I didn't bother with the rum because I do, with the Plantation Fiji, because I do a lot of rum cocktails on my channel anyway. But spiced and flavoured rum co um, cocktails, I don't do so much. So I've got two up my sleeve. Uh, coming off, oh, I tell you what, that's really good. Spiced orange ginger ale. So the first cocktail we're going to go for, uh, let's just pop that to one side. It is actually kind of wrong way around. There you go, Barman. Sort your life out, Barman. Come on. So the first one we're going for, which was one of my stonking serves for the hazelnut, is uh, the espresso martini. And someone has done this. I saw this on Instagram. I never even contemplated this as an espresso martini, but we're going to go for it. So I'm going to do it in typical style. For me, uh, I'm do equal measures. So I'm just going to do 25 mils here because I've got this jigger in my hand instead of the US ounces one. So 25, 25, 25. And where's my Mr. Black? Oh, Mr. Black or Kahlua? I think I might actually go Kahlua for this. I think I might go Kahlua because it's got the little bit of sweetness. Yeah, I'm going to go Kahlua because I think that's what most of you would have at home. So let's go Kahlua. Right, there we go. So just the equal measures of Kahlua, uh, espresso, espresso, posh, posh, posh one, isn't it? Espresso. What's the time? Oh. Uh, so posh one. There we go. That'll do. And um, so spiced figure of blackberry, coffee, and uh, espresso, and um, um, Kahlua. There we go. Right. Doesn't disappoint, right? Nick and Nora glass. I will double strain at this. To be fair, I should have done that for the plantation uh, daiquiri a minute ago. Um, but there we go. Let's double strain this. My little baby Nick and Nora glass. Is there a better glass than that, Nick and Nora? Right. So this is uh, the spiced fig. I keep wanting to say spiced flipping. Yeah, I keep wanting to say spiced blackberry. Spiced fig and blackberry. Uh, as an espresso martini. Oh, damn. Oh, damn, that's good. <laughs> oh, hello. Game changed. Oh, wow. The fig is very subtle, and I'm pleased I used the Kahlua in there because the Kahlua just adds the touch of sweetness that I think that possibly needs. If you're going to use Mr. Black, I potentially had that tasted, I potentially would have added a little bit of sugar. But that is gorgeous. Oh, wow. Game changed. Now, there's another one in here. This is also another Nick and Nora serve. Let's get another shaker. This, I don't know whether this is one of Ed's recipes or whether it's um, someone that stocks it, but this is on Belgrove's Instagram uh, profile. So I'm going to go for it. It's called the Cat, it's a twist on a Captain Shaddock. So uh, we are going to go for, uh, again, this is UK. So we're going 50 mil uh, double bubble. I'm going to do this proper actually. So 50 mil double bubble of spiced fig and blackberry rum. Uh, we're then going 25 mil of uh, lime juice. Is that my lime? Yep, 25 mil of lime juice. There we go. Filled my jugs up a bit too far. We're going 25 mil of grapefruit juice. So we've got 25 mil of that. And then what was it? 15 mil of grenadine. So 15, one five mil of grenadine. There we go. Boom, and I've just got morning uh, grenadine here. Morning. Right, uh, ice up. I think this will fit in there. Yeah, this will, this will fit in the Nick and Nora as well. Wow, I can still taste. I can still taste that espresso martini. That is stunning. Right, uh, so 50 ml of Belgrove spiced fig and blackberry rum. Uh, 25 ml lime juice, 25 ml of grapefruit juice, 15 ml of uh, grenadine and syrup. That'll do. Nice. Oh, the colour of that. Oh, ho, ho, hello. Oh, this is going to be... I need I need more room. I need more room. Right. Uh, Nick and Nora glass. This looks amazing in colour. So I used... Um, for that, If you're listening and not watching, I... Let's, oh, look at that. I, I used pink grapefruit juice. That is... 
Oh, I'll tell you what would have been good in here. Some miraculous foamers. Just to kind of give that white bit of froth on top. That would have been spectacular. Uh, right, let's see what this tastes like. Oh dear God. Oh wow. Possibly just a touch too citrus heavy. 25 ml of lime juice. I potentially would have dialed that back down to 15 ml of lime juice. Oh, but that is good. Oh, that is so good. The citrus, you do get the rum come forward, but I think the citrus just kills the, the flavors, the, the big bold flavors of that. So I think 15 ml, because you've effectively, you've got 50 ml there of citrus, of lime and grapefruit. So I would have dialed that back. Maybe 15 ml of each actually, compared to that. Or if you go in US, 60 ml of rum, and maybe 22 and a half, so three quarters of an ounce then of lime and grapefruit. But I get the, I get the flavor behind it, and that just would be spectacular. If it just dialed that citrus back. Oh, that's, that's really, really good. So yeah, that's, um, that's the Spice Fig and Blackberry. Um, all of these rum, everything I do, you can get off Master Remote. I'll put links and recipes and all that will be in the show description below. I think for me, actually for me, um, obviously the daiquiri kind of smashes it week in, week out. I do the daiquiri. The espresso martini is phenomenal. But just plain Coke, don't, don't worry about lime juice or anything in there. Uh, I think the Coke would be a great, great shout, kind of that and Coke. Uh, for you spiced rum, flavoured rum fans with Coke, I think, do you know what, that is really, really good. Well, and then the final part of this show, I see, I knew I've got my little timer going down there. I kept saying to my little Discord community, yeah, 15, 20 minutes. I knew full well that this would turn into a half an hour show. I will, I will try and cut it down in the future. But I like to have a little waffle. I like to have a chat with you guys. Uh, without the, <laughs> I love the live streams that I do. I absolutely love the live streams, but I kind of want to riff and just chat um, on there. So, you know, Forgive me, I love, I love to have a good chat. Right, now, this the final part of the show, I'm going to showcase every single week, I'm going to showcase uh, a different mixer. Because as I say, you know, we, we've, we've already chatted about it. Most of you guys that drink rum, uh, I've put them away in the fridge now, um, well, I, can't, I know I said I wasn't going to edit, but I've got a little, little cuts, just like I've got, I think I've got three cuts, that's all. Um, you kind of got your ginger ales, your ginger beers, and your Cokes, if that's the right way around, and the monitor, there we go. Uh, so I just want to kind of open your eyes up uh, to different other mixes, and I've got so many. This is what I do exceptionally well, and what I love to do. I can just riff about with these all day long, all week long, every single day of the year. I would never run out because I love just playing about with these. So the first one I want to start off with, uh, as it's been sitting here for quite a few weeks, uh, I've had this because I was going to do something else with it, is the coconut water. Now, how I'm going to roll this? I'm going to just taste them, uh, coconut water. Or I'm going to taste the mixer with the two rums that I'm kind of showcasing each week, just to kind of give you an idea. But how this is going to roll is I'm going to give you three simple serving suggestions, which will drop as shorts on YouTube. I might upload them as reels as well on Instagram, but they will drop as shorts on, on the old YouTube channel. So I'm not sure what days, but we'll kind of get there. We might all do them one day, I might spread them out, I don't know. But coconut water. Coconut water is one of those things that people don't naturally associate with rum for some reason. However, a lot of the tasting notes you get with rum is coconut. And so the two do work quite hand in hand. And one of the big cocktails for rum is obviously the pina colada, coconut. So kind of, I'm quite used to drinking rum with coconut. Now it depends on your coconut waters. Some of you may need to add a little bit of sweetener to it, whether it's sugar, whether it's demerara, whether it's vanilla, whether it's orgeat. Uh, a little secret, I am gonna roll one of them is gonna have uh, some orgeat syrup. Uh, that's coming out uh, alongside this video. So we're doing that, but I'll put these back now. I'll put them back in the wrong order. So I'm going to just try these. The spiced fig with um, coconut water. Spiced fig and blackberry. And then the plantation Fiji with coconut water. Just to kind of see what the crack is there. Ooh, cool. Gone for a heavy pour there, haven't we? That's all right, isn't it? That's all right. So coconut, where are we? Cool, heavy pour there. That'd be about right. So I think for highballs, you probably, with rum, with gin and tonics, you probably get away with doing like one to two. 
Um, but with, I'll be honest, with my highballs, with rum, I go at least one to four. Um, because rum has got a lot more flavour to it than gin, let's be honest. Sorry, gin lovers, but it has. Um, so one to four, one to five maybe, depending on how much flavour the rum has got. Um, but one, one to two is, is quite kind of hardcore. Uh, so we'll do that. That'll be about right there. So... Now, coconut water, as I say, this is the Vita Coco in the UK is pretty much the go-to brand. There are other brands. Uh, I'm not going to list them, but there are other brands. But Vita Coco is the big one that you get. So, uh, what's it taste like? The uh, plantation Fiji with coconut? Oh, wow, that's good. That's good. I do like my drinks cold. Wow, that is a match made in heaven. Hang on a minute. Let's just... Let's just add a couple of cubes of ice to that and just leave that for a couple of seconds just to chill down. I don't need any sweetener at all in that. That is just gorgeous. Plantation Fiji and coconut water. Absolutely gorgeous. Right, and then the, um, the spiced fig and black. You want to say spiced blackberry? Spiced fig and blackberry with coconut water. Oh, again, that's... Oh, I'm not sure. It's good. It's drinkable. I, oh, it's not it's not as drinkable as the plantation Fiji. Let's put it like that. Let's just add a couple of ice cubes to that. Let's see whether that because obviously the ice cube it's going to chill it down, but it's going to add a little touch of dilution, not too much. Oh wow, that plantation Fiji with coconut is unbelievable. I don't want any sweetener in there at all. But uh, the planta the, the plantation the um, spiced fig and blackberry. Oh, that's actually better. That's better. That's opened it up. So, oh, that's good. Coconut water is such an underrated mixer. Uh, so I'm going to be dropping three inspirations for you in the form of shorts. Make sure you do check them out. And let me know in the comments below um, what kind of, what mixes, how, how do you drink it? Do you just have rum and coconut? Do you go other ways? Do you do like uh, syrups or purees or something like that? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, and that ties up this week's show. It's a bit longer than what I thought it was going to be. I will try and uh, condense this down a little bit in future weeks. Kind of half an hour, I think maybe 10 minutes or like, I don't know, like 12 minutes, 12 minutes, and what's that? And then maybe six minutes for the mixer. Who knows? Who knows? But if you've got rums that you want me to feature, I've got plenty to get me on week going with. If you've got rums you want me to feature, whether it's spiced, flavoured, or proper, normal rums, then let me know. If you're a brand and you want to get involved, again, let me know in the comments below. Let's, let's just get it on. Let's just help the rum industry just grow. And if you've got mixers, although I don't, I'll be honest, I don't need much help with mixers because I've pretty much got most of them covered uh, coming up. And I've, as I say, I can go all year long with mixers. Um, but if you know, if you're a brand new mixer that I possibly won't have heard of, bearing in mind that I've heard of most of them. So if you're brand new that I've not heard of, drop me a line, rum brands, reach out, let's have a chat. Cheers. I'll see you next week.